All right, what's up, guys? I hope you guys are doing well this week. It's been a, it's been a busy week for us. It's been a short week. Uh, I had a lecture today. Then we had a, some nursing. Uh, I had to take the nursing students over to orientation at a hospital. So that was, uh, you know, doing the lecture and then coordinating that. So I'm, I'm kind of wore out today. But what I really want to talk about today, guys, is books. And I don't want to talk about like nursing school books or anything like that. These are going to be books that have been very influential to me. Books that I've always been, uh, I always kind of refer back to at some point in my life if there's something I'm not sure about. Uh, it just kind of helped me shape my philosophy and were entertaining at the same time. Some of them are historical fiction, a lot of them are nonfiction. So let's get into those six books right now. All right, guys, so the first book I want to get into is by Nassim Taleb, and it's called Anti-Fragile. Nassim Taleb is a uh, pretty influential author in the uh, kind of the philosophical debate right now, especially even in the ranks of uh, economics and financial uh, aspects of, of our society. Uh, he, he delves deep into anti-fragile. He's written Black Swan before, which was a uh, very, very detailed book, and it sort of predicted the downfall of the stock market in, uh, in 07 and 08. And, uh, you know, some of his concepts and philosophies are just absolutely spot on. I actually follow him on Twitter and he just puts a lot of these concepts into easy to understand formats such as uh, he has the, what he calls the triad and it is uh, things that are fragile, robust, and anti-fragile. So things that would be fragile would be something like pyramid schemes, get rich quick schemes, nothing that can actually sustain you long term. And these uh, and this triad of, of, frag, of fragile, anti-fragile, and robust it, it, it includes concepts, it includes the way you think, it includes businesses, uh, anything like that. So it's just a really interesting uh, take on economics, philosophy, all rolled up into one. It's an extremely, extremely uh, exciting book to read. I mean, I couldn't put it down. The first time I read it, I think I read it all the way through. It was just such a great book. So guys, if you get a chance, check out Anti-Fragile by Nassim Taleb. Guys, the next author I'm gonna talk about is Robert Greene. He wrote The 48 Laws of Power. He wrote The 33 Strategies of War, The Art of Seduction, Mastery, and The 50th Law with 50 Cent. So he has a very interesting take, a very Machiavellian type of uh, of outlook on life in general, and it's very, uh, very eye-opening at times. And I started reading his books back in 2004, so he's got a few books out, and I really don't think you could go wrong with any of those books. The 50th Law with 50 Cent was absolutely amazing. The Art of Seduction takes all these great seducers of all time and and these and, and the seduction process. He also talks about uh, the 48 Laws of Power, which is probably his most uh, popular book of all. So guys, check out any of those books by Robert Greene. Just amazing writer in general, amazing creative person, and you will be entertained any book you pick up by Robert Greene. So next, guys, we're gonna talk about Ayn Rand and Atlas Shrugged. Um, Sometimes that name, Ayn Rand, pops up some ears to people, uh, but she is a, was a very talented writer and philosopher um, back in the day, and I think she even dated some actors back in the day as well. But her books are absolutely amazing. You may not agree with the whole philosophy of objectivism, but I can guarantee you, you'll get something out of reading any of her books. My favorite, of course, is Atlas Shrugged with John Galt. You guys may know who John Galt is, uh, or, or may have just seen bumper stickers that say, who is John Galt? Highly recommend anything by Atlas, I mean by Ayn Rand. Uh, but Atlas Shrugged, basic, the basic premise is that it follows John Galt. And John Galt is, is a really an individual, rustic uh, individualism type of person. That's what the book kind of focuses on. And I think that, uh, you know, you're going to have some people that, that throughout history really don't like Atlas Shrugged, but they don't like it because of what it actually represents. They like it because they're on the opposite end of the political spectrum on that. However, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't read it. It's an extremely eye-opening book as well. Very deep, um, and any of her books are very, very interesting books. All right, guys, next we're gonna talk about Eric Larson and Devil in the White City. Guys, this is probably one of, my, one of the most entertaining books, one of the darkest books. Uh, it also took, takes place in 1893 at the Chicago War, Chicago's World Fair. Um, it's, it's, it follows uh, two people, Daniel Burnham and Dr. H.H. H. Holmes. Now, Daniel Burnham was the architect and one of the main influencers behind the 1893 uh, Chicago's World Fair. Now, H.H. H. Holmes, which you may know that name, is that 
he was a serial killer at that same time. And I think Leonardo DiCaprio has been supposedly marked to play H.H. H. Holmes in this book called Devil in the White City. Uh, guys, that this book still sticks with me to this day. It's such a great, great book. It goes back and forth between the two characters and they're not characters, they're real life people. It also talks about the Ferris wheel and how they were trying to compete with, uh, with France over at the, uh, the World's Fair out there. So it's just an amazing historical book. Um, and then it follows the serial killer and how H.H. H. Holmes was leading people to his murder castle. It was a, a extremely dark, uh, but extremely eye-opening because it was also coming close to the turn of the century where a lot of changes were going on in America, and he captures that extremely, extremely well. So check out Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. I think it might be in movie production here pretty soon. This book, guys, The Great Leader and the Fighter Pilot by Blaine Harden. This book is absolutely heartbreaking when you know what goes on in this fighter pilot's life and how it all goes full circle in the end. And I'll get to that in just a second without, without giving away any details or any spoilers. So this guy who was a fighter pilot in, in North Korea in the Korean War, he stole a Korea, basically stole a North Korean jet as he was an actual soldier of that army, flew it across the DMZ into South Korea, gained his freedom that way, but the trek along the way was absolutely amazing. He tells stories along the way, talks about how rough it was meeting Russian uh, officers that were, that were along with him in the fighter brigade. It's just an amazing book, guys. If you get a chance, check it out. You won't be disappointed. And finally, guys, my favorite of all time. Probably, it is my favorite book of all time. It's, it's one that I still look out look at to this day, uh, just to get you know help on just different things in life. And that is Letters from a Stoic by Seneca. Um, it, it takes place on the Stoicism philosophy. Uh, if you haven't read or studied anything on the Stoicism philosophy, this book is a great place to start. It gives everyday examples of what these guys were dealing with back in the Roman times and, and the same political struggles and the, and the same struggles that we have today are clearly written out in this book by Seneca. So guys, if you get a chance, check out that book as well. All right, guys, that's it for my book review. I hope you guys liked it. Those are my, my six favorite books by far. And it's not really, it's more like six favorite authors than books because a couple of, couple of authors in there write multiple books. But I will say this, any of those books you pick up from any of those authors, you will enjoy. You will get something out of it, I promise. Um, okay, guys, that's the video for today. In the upcoming uh, uh, next few videos I'm going to have, I'm actually uploading a couple of really, really boring lectures. So just get ready. If you see that, if you see like a 45 minute lecture up there, just know that it's going to be an extremely long lecture. It's, it's actually going to be meant for my students so they can rewatch these lectures. I'm going to have two of them coming up in the future as well. So, all right, guys, that's it. Have a good night.